Hello, my fellow chicken lovers. You guys have asked for this video a lot on Instagram and on YouTube, and to be honest with you, I have kind of been dreading making it, and I'll tell you why. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys straight up. I'm gonna put timestamps in the description like I always do, but this video is not gonna be a quick, short video. I really wanna go in depth on all the things that matter when you're training a dog with chickens. I love doing videos that are numbered lists or that are step one, step two, step three. Unfortunately, training dogs around chicken is not as simple as a numbered list. I am gonna give you all the tips that I use, but if you're expecting a quick fix, um, and a lot of people I know want quick, easy YouTube videos, that's not what I'm gonna put out because it's not gonna be the complete picture. And frankly, if you don't have the patience for a free online video, you probably don't have the patience for the weeks that it's gonna tr take to train your dog either. So those people can go ahead and click out if you're serious about training your dog. Let's get into it. The reason I've been dreading making this video is because I feel super not qualified. I have worked with dogs for years. I didn't really like the show ring and showing off and I got more into kind of dog behavior and behavioral problems as I grew up, but I've never done this professionally. So I want you guys to know I'm not a professional dog trainer. If you guys are trying to train your dog and you can't train it, I always recommend reaching out to a professional. Professional dog trainer, just cause someone calls himself that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be good. So you're definitely gonna wanna check references. You're gonna wanna check how they train dogs. I've met dog trainers that I respect and some that I don't respect at all. So make sure you do your due diligence. But today I'm just gonna show you guys kind of the general steps that I take with dogs if I am trying to train them around chickens. My dog chicken training experience is pretty much limited to four-ish dogs. I am a firm believer that any dog, any dog, can be trained to be safe around chickens. The problem is not usually the dog. The problem is usually the owner or the handler gives up, doesn't have the patience for it, etc. Or maybe just genuinely doesn't know how to read the dog to teach them. That's where a professional might come in handy for you. One thing I've noticed in kind of homesteading communities in general is there are a lot of kind of old wives tales that are circulated. One of them being that if a dog kills a chicken, it can never be trained to be safe around chickens again. There's literally no truth to this. The people who say that really, it's just either they're too lazy or they don't know what they're doing. There is absolutely no truth to if a dog has killed a chicken before, it can't be trained, nor is there any truth to a dog is too old to be trained or a dog is a breed that can't be trained. Breed can make things a little bit easier or a little bit more difficult, but breed will never rule out a dog and some of the best chicken guardians. There's various people on Instagram who have plenty of bully breeds that are great with chickens and obviously shepherds and we have two mutts who are better with chickens than a lot of uh, some of the more traditional chicken protecting breeds, if you will. As usual, I did put everything in a blog post. I linked that below for you guys. I'm just gonna be going basically over what the blog post says, but hopefully the video is gonna be a little bit more help because I am gonna demonstrate everything that I'm talking about kind of in overlaid footage. Step one in training your dog how to be safe around chickens is really to establish a base of respect from the dog in the first place. So this is not exciting, it's not getting right into it, but I did list a few things on that blog post that if your dog is displaying these behaviors, it's probably not gonna be ready to learn to be safe around chickens. So some of these behaviors that are kind of red flag that I look for if I'm working with a new dog, number one is regularly pulling on the leash. So if your dog doesn't have leash manners, that's gonna be a problem, especially when it comes to, I call it chicken breaking or chicken proofing your dog. If the dog doesn't respect you when you're walking it on a leash, it's probably not gonna respect you when there is a very tasty looking little prey-like animal there either. Step one is to rewind. If your dog is crazy on a leash, it's time to just work on some leash manners, go on some walks. There just should not be a lot of pulling going on. I don't use any special tools to do that. Um, so I don't personally use choke collars or prong collars. I'm not gonna say that you shouldn't. I do know certain dogs need a little more enforcement. I'll show you guys what I do. They think they're going on a DW, unfortunately, they're not. Uh, what we do is we use regular nylon collars. But what I like to do, when I'm training a dog actively, um, or if I want more control, is just to put it at the top of their neck, like this. Fly's got kind of a <laughs> Fly's got kind of a big fluffy neck, so it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, can I try with Freya? Yeah, okay, let me try with Freya. So dogs are really smart, especially Freya here. She she knows if the collar is not at the top of her neck that she's not gonna really care. Um, so what we do when we're training dogs is we'll just kind of repeatedly slide it up to the top of their neck. 
it's gonna slide down the more you're working with them and be in kind of that normal position by their shoulders. That's just generally what I do instead of using a, show a choke collar or any of those crazy harness devices that go around their nose or anything. Um, if you know what you're doing, that's not necessary. Just having the collar at the top of the neck is gonna help a lot. I know, I know, I know. You kiss. Oh, thank you. Okay, really quick, I'll kind of go over the three other red flags before moving on to training with chickens. Uh, not respecting the handler's space. So if you move into a dog space, and it doesn't move out of the way easily if it kind of fights you on that. That's kind of a red flag. Uh, another example would be like if you're going out a door or coming in, if that dog is always pushing you out of the way to go first, probably gonna be a respect problem. So that's just a little rule you might wanna start implementing. Number three, inconsistent recall. So just coming when they're called. To be honest, our dogs are not perfect at this, but if your dogs have no idea what it means to come when called, then that's gonna be a problem for sure. And most notably is really aggression towards any human or any handler of any kind. So um, that's just a big no in my book. And that's just kind of a list of four things that if, you, if your dog is demonstrating these behaviors, you might not have established that base of respect that is gonna be necessary for the dog to be safe around chickens. So I really don't want any disasters to happen when people are training their dogs with chickens, but those are four things that if they're a problem with your dog already, it's definitely time to start working on those before moving on to training with chickens. All right, thank you for sticking with me thus far. We can actually get into kind of the steps and the tips that I use to actively train dogs around chickens now. The first step and the biggest step is to utilize a leash to desensitize your dog around chickens. So desensitization or desensitize is gonna be the word we're talking about here. And what that means is the goal is to make the chicken from, go from being something that is exciting to the dog and something that is worthy of its attention to just something that is no different than the cabinet or the couch or the chair or the plant. That the dog is just gonna see it as another part of everyday life and not care about its presence. And the way that I like to do that is by really just exposing the dog in a safe way to the chickens over and 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 over. So there is a specific way that I like to do this. I will always start with a leashed dog with the collar close to the top of their neck and a regular six foot nylon lead. This is what I like to use. Uh, I don't like the leashes with any like bungee, like give to them. Um, we're not going, bud, I'm sorry. I'll link all the gear that I like to use to train dogs below, but this is really pretty much all it takes. So what I like to do is I like to move past the chicken at a distance, starting off with a far distance, and I like to move past the chicken back and forth, especially the first time a dog is exposed to the chicken. What you can kind of expect is that dog is gonna prick its ears, it's going to probably pull towards the chicken. It depends on the intensity that the dog is doing it. If the dog is giving the chicken a little bit of attention, but I can bring that dog's attention back to moving with me back and forth, uh, kind of making passes away from the chicken at a distance, then I don't mind because eventually the dog is gonna stop paying attention to the chicken, they're gonna just keep walking, doing their thing. When training dogs around chickens, my goal is always to give the dog a job that is more important than the chicken, okay? So I want the dog to be working. I want the dog to be moving forward and back, be uh, circling. I'm gonna be working the dog's brain. And what I'm looking for is for that dog to take the attention off the chicken and put it back on me. Now, some dogs are just gonna be really, really excited about chickens. It's just, you can't blame them for being dogs. They're doing the dog thing right. And you are having to change the way that they will naturally act. It's very rare for a dog to be fine around chickens right away. I know some of them are, and that's awesome if you got lucky. Most of them are not going to be safe. If you have a dog that is really excited, barking, pulling like crazy on the leash to try to get to that chicken, what I would do then if I was training the dog, is I would pull the dog further away. So increase the distance between the dog and the chicken if the dog is overexcited, and I might even introduce more distraction such as toys or treats. Now, you have to be careful with toys and treats because a lot of times, especially with an already excited dog, 
you introduce treats and if you introduce toys, you can increase the excitement and you can almost reward that prey drive, which is not what we wanna do. I want my dogs, when I'm training, I want them to be calm around chickens. So if I really need to, I might introduce treats. Not a huge fan of treat training personally, but I'm not gonna say there is no place for it. So I might use a really good treat, think like steak, not Cheerios. They're not gonna care about Cheerios if there's chicken over there. And I'm just gonna use that to distract the dog a little bit here and there. So the goal is to get that dog to stop focusing on the chicken, where it's at, and then eventually I'll start closing the distance and doing the same thing again. So the closer we get to the chicken, the more likely the dog is to be excited and to be pulling on the leash and to be going after the chicken. But the goal is to remind the dog that the chicken is not what needs to be focused on right now. I am what needs to be focused on. Some things I'll do is walk back and forth. Uh, I might get the dog to back up and move forward. That's a little bit of a brain exercise. If your dog knows other tricks like walking through your legs, you can try that. Here is the number one mistake that I think people make when they're trying to train their dog around chickens. They put the leash on, they take their dog, and they walk up to the chicken. That is something that I do not recommend because if you're a dog, and you are walking towards the chicken with your human, you're probably thinking, awesome, we are going on a hunt as a pack and we are moving towards our prey and we are gonna get it and this is gonna be great, we're gonna work as a team, bad move. So I will never, especially with a new dog, take it straight towards the chicken. So I always wanna close that space in between the dog and the chicken by walking back and forth, think by like winding up or winding down a mountain rather than just trying to drive straight to the top. If I'm working a dog that is unsafe around chickens, I never want it to be facing that chicken and moving towards it. That comes later and by that point it's a lot easier, but I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make. So walking back and forth, slowly making your way closer to the chicken. One of the most important things to note is that this is not not something that is going to happen in one training session for most dogs. And even if the dog does learn it in one session, it's still not gonna be trustworthy. In order to have a seriously chicken safe dog, I like to do little frequent sessions over a long period of time. So I like training sessions to be maybe five to 15 minutes and I like to do them at least twice a day, if not three or four. A lot of people have day jobs and they don't have that much time even if you're just doing it once a day or even once every other day. It's just gonna take a longer time to get to that safe place. But what I don't recommend is I don't recommend taking the dog for two hours and trying to muscle through with the dog. It's gonna be miserable for you. It's gonna be miserable for the dog. <laughs> it's probably gonna be miserable for the chicken. And then a lot of people are gonna give up that way. I think the biggest mistake people make when trying to train dogs around chickens is they try and do it all at once and then they give up so quickly. Little sessions, frequently are gonna be a lot more effective than burning yourself out, burning the dog out, and trying to force it all way before it's supposed to happen. Remember, patience is the name of the game here. It's not about forcing a dog or muscling a dog. It's about looking for those dog behavior cues watching their ears, watching their eyes, watching their body posture, and correcting those cues appropriately before they escalate to the red zone and is no longer thinking with his brain, but is thinking with instinct. I cannot stress that enough. Dogs do not screw up their training. People screw up their training. Dogs are just being dogs. So keep reminding yourself, train yourself to be patient, and you're gonna have a lot more success. I'm kind of jumbling up a lot of what is ordered a little bit better in the blog post, so I do think it's worth visiting that post after this video to, I think it's just a little bit more organized, but I hope by demonstrating it visually that that will make even more sense as well. Now, obviously you cannot expect to always have your dog leashed around chickens, so eventually the time will come to remove the leash from the dog. Now I wanna talk about the dog's behavior when that time comes, because this can obviously be a really dangerous time and if you don't watch the dog's behavior, disaster is gonna be imminent. Number one, if you're unfamiliar with dog psychology and with dog behavior, it's time to read up on it or watch some shows, do some research because it is gonna help you so much in the long run. It's not a part of training dogs around chickens, it's just a part of having a dog. So if that's not something you're familiar with, do some research first, but long story short, when I go to get ready to take the leash off a dog, I am looking for kind of these, five-ish things. Number one is relaxed ears. 
so they're neither pricked forward nor are they back kind of dogs when they're really anxious especially some of the dogs i've worked with training around chickens they will pull their ears back because they don't trust themselves and they are really anxious that's kind of the point where they know that they're not supposed to attack the chickens but they like feel like they can't help themselves and they might so just because a dog's ears aren't forward doesn't mean it's safe just because their back doesn't mean it's safe i kind of look for relaxed ears because if they're forward it's more of a predatory state towards the chicken and what i look for also is when they're kind of to the side like this if they're pulled off to the side that can mean that the dog is just not relaxed and it's not time to remove the leash yet another thing i look for is relaxed eyes so they're not fixated on anything in general usually by the time the dogs are ready to have the leash removed around the chickens usually they're actually more focused on other things you know somebody walking across the street or a squirrel in a tree obviously they're going to be looking at something but i'm looking for relaxed eyes and i really just don't want them on the chickens at this point third thing i look for is the dog is allowing plenty of slack in the leash so i'm not having to fight the dog around the chicken obviously i feel like that should kind of be a given but uh the dog's not pulling on the leash to get to the chickens nor really is the dog pulling on the leash to get to anything else dog should just be completely relaxed at this point kind of going off not having tension in the leash is a calm willingness to follow the handler so if the dog's on the leash there's slack in the leash the dog looks relaxed there's chickens around and if i start to walk to the left the dog is just going to follow me to the left it's not going to try and stay put it's not going to try and pull the other direction it's not going to create tension in the leash so just kind of a calm willingness to just follow me where I want to go. And then kind of the last one I look for is the dog is obedient to verbal commands such as leave it or come here. Full disclosure, I am not a big verbal command person, uh, especially when it comes to dog behavior. So tricks are a little different story. You need verbal commands there. I totally understand that. But dog behavior is more just about their state of mind. And if they're not in a calm, safe state of mind, Nothing you can say is gonna take them out of that state of mind. So generally I'm just looking for a general responsiveness to like if I call fly Freya, you know, just that their ears or their eyes come towards me. Um, or if a chicken's walking by, if, if they try and reach out and sniff it, even if it's gently, if I just say, hey, leave it, that they just leave it. It's not super complicated, um, but those are things I look for before I take the leash off. Now, when it's time to remove the leash and test the dog off leash, uh, generally, I don't like doing this until the dog has been training around chickens for at least a week, if not two or three weeks. Every dog is different. The amount of time that it'll take, every training session is different, but I'm not gonna be doing this after just a few days. I'm gonna be doing this after a week or more. Obviously, I always use extreme caution with this step. Uh, one mistake I think people might make is trying to take the dog further away from the chickens like they did at the beginning, and then removing the leash there. It might work, but the problem is if your dog is not safe around chickens, it's not ready, guess who's gonna get to those chickens first? You or the dog. The dog's gonna get there a lot sooner than you are. So I actually prefer to take the leash off when we are amidst, kind of around the chickens. If it's possible, a really nice test is if there is a barrier in between you and the chickens, uh, taking the leash off the dog with the barrier there. If the dog beelines towards that barrier or if the dog is acting too interested in the barrier, obviously that's a problem. I'm gonna need to rewind on those steps and just work on the leash again. But it's important to note, <laughs> fly. But it's important to note that just because your dog is acting safe where there's a barrier in between you and the chickens does not mean that if that barrier is not there, that that dog is not gonna just completely change their mindset and their behavior. So sooner or later, I will remove the leash with the dog around the chickens, kind of in their midst. And one thing that I like to do is keep that movement going. So ideally the dog I'm working with is already gonna be familiar with healing off leash. So what I like to do is try taking that leash off, but keep that dog working, keep the dog moving so the dog doesn't have a chance to just become overwhelmed with the chickens around it. Remember, this process is about desensitizing the dog to the chickens. We're not yelling at the dog no all the time. We're not yanking on the dog on the leash. We're just making other things more important to the dog than the chickens. And mainly I like to do that through working with them. And I just find that they're a lot more responsive when they are moving. These are animals that are made to move. They're not made to sit in a house all day. Needless to say, if any of these steps don't go as planned, if the dog reverts back to predatory behavior, it just means it's time to rewind and spend more time gradually closing the gap gradually exposing that dog to the chickens. I should point out that both of our dogs when we got them attacked chickens. So I could go on about how bad they were with chickens when we first got baby chicks and when we first got chickens. What's really important though is now they do act as chicken guardians. When it comes to how to train your dogs to guard chickens, 
That's something I just don't feel qualified teaching on. I believe it just comes from a general respect from us and a teamwork with us. I think they both just understand that these are our things that we take care of and they are more than happy to help out. So far they have chased off a possum at least once and we've seen them chase off a hawk at least once. We don't really watch them with the girls that much so we don't know everything that goes on but we do know that we have seen predators and that they do protect them against predators. Obviously if you are somebody who wants to be able to occasionally leave your dog alone with chickens, we let ours in the backyard with chickens all the time. We've been doing this almost four years now. We've never had a problem. If that's something that you're gonna to wanna to do, I do recommend watching from a close window the first few times that you do it. So I will always observe the dogs off leash around the chickens for weeks before I even consider closing the door and leaving them alone with them. Usually you can really tell uh, where things are gonna go wrong or not at that point. But I would say if that's something that I'm gonna try, I'm definitely gonna be watching out a nearby window for the first while to make sure the dog is not changing its behavior when I'm not around. Another thing that's interesting is your chickens will learn that your dogs are safe when they are. They will learn that your dogs are safe and they will not trust other dogs that they come that are strange. That's something we noticed. Uh, the girls do not trust strange dogs. They know specifically that our dogs are their dogs that they can trust them uh, and, and I think that's pretty cool. Can all dogs be trained to be safe around chickens? Look, I am of the mindset that 99.999% of dogs are going to be able to be trained. Of course, with any life form, there might be some dogs that something's just not wired right in their head and they might never be able to be trained. But my firm belief is that if the dog is unable to be trained around chickens, it's not the dog, it's the person. So don't be afraid to reach out for help. It's so worth it. It's not worth a life of worrying about what happens if I forget the chickens are out and someone lets the dog out or yada yada. This is just part of having chickens and dogs. And I wanna really encourage you guys to do as much research as you can, not just from me. I want you to research any and all available data and methods to find the one that works for you because I think it's so sad when people think that because their dog is a certain breed or a certain age or anything like that, that that means it's just too late for that dog. Almost never the case. Hopefully this works as a jumping off point for you guys. Don't take what I'm saying as fact, take it as just one data point on a graph of many people who have dogs who are safe around chickens. Before I trained our dogs, there was a good video that I watched about another girl who did it. So I'm gonna link that one for you guys below. And hopefully this encourages you guys that you can do it. Because again, I'm not a professional. None of this is advice. This is just my experience. And if me, just your regular old dog owner down the block can do it, I firmly believe that you can too. If you haven't already followed us on Instagram, our Instagram handle is oak underscore abode. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we would love if you would hit that subscribe button so that you can join us again in the future. Leave any questions, comments, tips if you've got them, if you have a dog that's safer on chickens, what you did. The more advice, the better that is out there for everybody to use. Thanks for watching guys. We will see you next time.